Right, so I've just uh, hooked up the flu uh, flu Philips frequency counter to the output of my signal generator just to verify the frequency, and that's what it's giving. Right, so I've dropped the gate down, down so you can see it's actually rounding. It's just a fraction off. Right, so I know that this what's coming out of this generator is correct. Okay, so that means this one here needs calibrating. So um, I did try hooking up an external reference, but for some reason didn't like it. I've got my um, rubidium sitting just there. We really should put that in a box one day. Um, put a proper connection stuff on it. We really need to get onto that. Um, so I've got my rubidium standard sitting there, and um, that's already locked and stuff. But I hooked it up to the out to the reference input and switched, flicked the switch on the back and it didn't like it. It just ignored it basically. So I've got my um, just here is my another reference stand I've got here which is um, it's just a TCXO but it's fairly accurate. It's, it's really really close. Um, certainly close to the oscillator that's running in this thing right now. So um, yeah that didn't really help either. So the other thing I tried, which I'm going to show you in a second, let's bring this back up here. I'm going to hook up the um, reference oscillator output from this unit. So then you can actually see what the frequency of the internal oscillator is running at. Down there, take it off here. So showing up, what's that? Uh, Twenty hertz. Trying to get a slight more resolution on it. Come on, another digit. Here we go. All right. Now Ten megahertz. Um, that's 200 hertz. Is it 20 hertz? 20 hertz. Oh, bloody hell, I don't know. <laughs> 10,000 kilohertz, right? So that's 70 kilohertz. So that's 100 hertz, 20 hertz. 20.7 hertz out. Here we go, right? So 20.7 hertz out. So that's not a huge amount, but um, obviously when it's scaling up for the higher frequencies on this thing, it's, um, it's not actually doing a good job of it. Right, so put it back down here. So that's again, that's one gigahertz going in for my generator. So um, yeah, that's out by enough to be concerned. I don't know, even 20 hertz. That's still 20 hertz over 110 megahertz. So it's 10 times, 100 times that should be out by. Oh my god, I shouldn't be doing maths on my head this time of day. <laughs> um, so that's 100 times 20 hertz, 2 kilohertz, 2.07 kilohertz. That adds up 2.07 kilohertz. So, yes, that's purely because the reference oscillator inside it is off frequency. So, uh, you know, at least we know that much. But yeah, I did have some weirdness when I was flicking to the, ex the uh, external reference. It, it kind of locked up and just didn't like it. Maybe it's because it didn't have a counter to reference it and maybe it locked up the controller or something, I'm not sure. But even when I put it back to an internal reference, it wasn't happy. So um, I might have to look at the external reference input and stuff and see what's going on there. Um, check out the specs in case I'm not actually feeding a good enough signal for, for that. Maybe it requires a square wave or something. Um, these, I think that might be square wave actually. I'm pretty sure that's square wave output. That's sine, I think. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there's not much. There's actually got some labels. This is. It's got 
got some indicators behind here. I'm just going to try and get this thing off. I hate it when I stick labels on panels. It's awful. I should never do that. Put on bloody casing. Right. Especially when there's indicators on this panel. Um, it's got like this amplitude option as well, right? So you can see the input amplitude, but right now it's showing nothing, which is also interesting. And it's showing DBM there, and it's got some other indicators behind here, but um, yeah. So it's slightly off frequency, but that that frequency error correlates with the internal reference frequency being off. So um, that will make sense, you know. So that that will comes out okay. But uh, I need to clean this off here and uh, pull it apart and look at calibrating it. So I've actually got to pop out again shortly, so I don't have time to do it right now. But um, oh, kick the tripod again. Um, anyway, it works. So that's the uh, the thing. You know, the fan is on the back and it's working okay. The fan is, you know, it's as noisy as the fan is. This thing's huge, which is a bit of a concern, but I can probably still fit on the bench because. I would actually like to keep this on my bench. Um, it should do everything my other counters can do, really. You know, so um, if it does prove to be okay, I'll have to check the sensitivity a bit more. If the sensitivity is a bit lower, then I might have to reconsider that, but um, I do like to have good sensitivity on the counter. But, um, yeah, let's see. I mean, it would have been nice to have this on my bench because it's supposed to do 18 gigahertz or something like that. I can't remember what it's supposed to be, but. Um, it's it's quite a high frequency you can do. It's got all kinds of instructions on the top which I have to read as well. But if I say I only just got it out of the box as you saw, so I'm still playing around with it, still trying to figure it out. But it works, which um, in a way is a bad thing because I was hoping to do a um, a video on it. Um, you know to actually you know repair a video as my next project, but you know it looks like it's probably okay, so I probably don't need to do that. We'll see, I won't know until I actually look into that external reference thing going on there, whether it's got a fault or not. Um, it did seem a little bit strange, it was ignoring any inputs I put into it. So, um, I don't know yet, I'm going to have to look into that some more. And I will I will video the calibration side of it, I'll have to get the manual out and um, go through it. And it's probably quite simple, I mean it's probably just the reference oscillator in there, there's probably not much else. So, um, but yeah, it's a big beast. I think it might just fit on my desk if I'm lucky. I mean, I've got like a, um, I've got a small gap here. It might go in there, maybe. Yeah, it might be a bit tall because unfortunately I've got this gap between here and the shelf, and that's probably not going to quite fit in there. Um, but yeah, I have to figure that out. So anyway, I'll do another video shortly with. Um, be pulling it apart and calibrating it. Right, I'm just going to uh, have a look at this. So, as you can see here, um, I've got the unit open. It's actually just one screw. Take this screw out here, which is on the handle, which I'll show you here. So, just on the case here, I'll take that one screw out there. Just got this couple piece goes over there. Put it out, and it slides off. Right, and it gets into it pretty easy. Um, so it slides out, then over here is the actual card which is used for the um, reference oscillator. So there's two card versions. This is a TCXO apparently. So it's um so a bit maybe it's a bit loud over there. The um so it's a TCXO and it's fairly stable, it's not too bad, it's just wrong. Um, the option so option one is a avanized oscillator and again it's just the car which plugs in so um, I might actually see if I'm just get a card for it when I was thinking about I've got to do have an avanized oscillator I can put in but um, yeah I mean being a frequency account I want it to be as accurate as possible and I'd rather have it avanized um, yeah so right now I've got the frequency here, as you can see, 10 megahertz running off that counter there. So that is uh, 22.3 hertz out right now. 
I've only had it on for about five minutes, so it's still got some more time to go. So um, I'm just going to give it a bit more time to warm up. Seems fairly stable though. Um, and I'll give it a bit of a, a tweak up because I know it's definitely high anyway. So uh, let's just get a screwdriver for that. What do we need? This one, eh? Probably shouldn't use metal on it, but there's currently no difference. No, it's going away. There we go. Because I've got a long, um, long time delay on there, so I'm gonna have to wait. It's like 10 seconds refresh rate on the counter in order to get the resolution I want on there. Okay, it's slightly better, but do we want? Let's go that way a bit more. This is that by quite a way. It could even be its age quite badly. This is a very fine adjustment. That's now 19 hertz out. So, yeah, I don't know if I can get enough adjustment out of this. Thirteen hertz. Wait for the next refresh, it might be slightly lower. Eleven hertz. So closer, it's only half as far out now. But yeah, I don't know about adjustment range. We'll see how we go. It's eight hertz. Again, I've got a ten second refresh rate or so on there, so um, it's going to be a bit slow to get on that final bit. This is seven. Feels like the adjustment's tightening up. It might be um, out of range. It's five hertz. No, I've still got some adjustment left. It's just getting slightly tighter. Two point seven hertz. Let's wait for the next refresh. 2.4 hertz. That's 2 hertz. One point six. Yeah, so one point three now. Swing this camera around and show everything. You've seen me doing this now. I'll show you. Adjustment. There we go. The chopper doesn't fall over on me. Right, so that's one hertz. There. So let's see how close we can get this. Because it's only a TCXO, it might not stay um, bang on, even though I do get it right. So I'm going to try and get it as close as I can right now and we'll see how we go. It's very fine adjustments now so it's probably going to take a bit to get it going. The gate light flicked but I didn't see it change so it's probably not quite adjusted enough there. Yeah, so it go again so no, not enough yet. A bit more. This should be pretty close. Look at that. 0.2 hertz. Another refresh. But one hertz. You see how close I've got to get this though, because when I did the um, one gigahertz frequency check, even though it was only twenty, was it twenty point seven hertz out? It was two kilohertz out at one gigahertz. So um, you can see there, it's, it's now showing bang on. So um, that's not bad at all. I might just let that settle for a little while and we'll see how that goes. As long as it stays bang on, it's right. So, I mean, I know this is really, really good. The calibration on this is excellent. Um, 
that's more stable than the HP. The HP is actually less accurate. Um, it's more um, affected by temperature. As soon as I take the cases off that HP, the calibration, the internal calibration goes off. Because this is much better. The, the, the Philips one is much more stable. Give it slightly more time. Um, yeah, so this one's much more stable. You take the case off and adjust it, and it doesn't really throw it out. When you take the case off the HP, it throws it out. So I actually have trouble getting the HP more accurate. Um, it's really temperature sensitive, even though it's got a um, an avalanche oscillator on it. It just doesn't like it. So uh, the, yeah, the Philips one's matching more accurate. Um, this is why I want to use the Philips one to get this adjusted. It's got quite a long gate time there now. It's now two hertz low, based on that one. Let's see what next gate time. One hertz low. I might go back a fraction, just a touch, and see if that's enough. Yeah. So um, as you see, it's pretty easy to do this. Um, the, I do have the manual for it. Well, electronic manual. I found it online, of course, as you do most things HP, which is brilliant. Um, it's 423 pages, which is a bit of a pain, but um, yeah, well, that's what it is. <laughs> Lots of information. Quality is not too bad. It's, 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 it's the scans are fairly good. It's not too bad, but um, it's a lot of reading. It's a lot of data trying to filter through. And um, but it does tell you how to, how to do the calibration stuff, and it does actually mention things like um, another frequency source, you know, frequency generators and stuff to to um, inject the, the wire frequencies to, to test it but unfortunately I don't have anything above 1 gigahertz so I've got the, I've got the Marconi there which is 1 gigahertz and I've also got that Fluke which I recently repaired which is 1.05 gigahertz so um, now if I actually need to get a um, a higher frequency signal generator as well just to go with stuff you know so I'll tweak this slightly more still a little bit low so it's probably still warming up a bit too um, really I just wanted to see if I get it tuned down enough and it's obviously I use within tuning range so it's good I'm happy with that but um, I'll probably leave it on for an hour or so and then then, then do some more tuning so it's only been on about probably a quarter of an hour now um, so it's probably still warming up anyway you know you should really give these things a decent warm up period you know hours not minutes um, the things account has been on for about an hour now I suppose so that would be fairly well warmed up um, that actually gets, settles down quite quickly so that's I'm not really worried about the counter itself but this one here I'm, I've uh, I think still got to do some warm-up period there but uh, yeah I think I might just leave it there and see how we go let it sit there for a while warm up so what I might do now while I'm waiting for that is connect up my signal source again. You see it's still sitting bang on 10 megahertz here. Spin this around. Hook up the signal generator. Oh, I'm not the camera again. Hook up the signal generator onto the. Uh, I want to adapt that. I want to do the 1 gigahertz output. I'll do one gigahertz input on there. And speed the rate up a bit so I can actually read it. And I oh, need to do this set the generator up, that would help too, wouldn't it? Carry for it, 1000 megahertz. IF level 0.4 volts. Uh, modulation off just to be absolutely sure okay so with that calibration right there now even though it looks like it's bang on I'll just bring this camera around a bit so you can see I don't drop the microphone, doesn't it? I've got a wired mic now. 
Anyway, so you can see that even that is drifting around a little bit, eh? You know, there's a bit of drift there. But that's pretty close now, isn't it? And that's four hertz, five hertz. When I first turned it around and connected that up, it was showing just under. Right? But if you look here, it's dropped down again. So what I'm going to do is put this microphone back down and secure it. Hold on. I'm just going to tweak this frequency again. And let's see what that does. Quite a long go time right now. But yeah, it doesn't seem to have changed much there, has it? I thought it was gone by now. Let's go down to the counter itself. Get this bloody tripod from this room here a little bit. Oh, there you go. That's why you turn the right things to loosen things up anyway so that's what it's reading right now and that's what the counter is reading so there is a little bit of discrepancy between the two I can probably just tweak this one here um, if you've got a longer cycle time maybe it'll help it Give it a bit more accuracy if I do a longer gate time. So right now that counter up there is showing the frequency is being really close. Right, it's saying that's saying 10 megahertz there, right? And that's saying that. There we go. It's drifted slightly more. But still, I mean, a couple of hertz accuracy at one gigahertz isn't bad, is it? Really. Um, Which one's wrong? Mm, don't know. Where's that drift coming from? Don't know. So it could be drifting by Marconi. You know, it's, it's, it's possible it's drifting by that much at a gigahertz. It could be a drift in the in the uh, microwave counter. It could be a drift in my Philips counter. It could be all three drifting slightly. Um, this is why it's good to use a single reference oscillator. Um, But yeah, that's not what I've got set up. So it's gone up to 14 now. So I think it's still settling down temperature wise. I think the temperature's still drifting around a bit. It's just, uh, let's just try tweaking that frequency there. I'm going to adjust it to this frequency here. Okay. Let's jump quite away there. Right. So that's probably a much finer control, much finer way of tuning it than the other way. Because see, I actually don't have enough resolution. But this is 100 times more sensitive, so 100 hertz. Well, 1 hertz is effectively um, 0 0.001 hertz resolution. Because it's multiplied by 10 at 1 gigahertz. So... Um, Adjusting this for Hertz is probably more accurate than adjusting that for tenths of Hertz. Um, yeah, I'd say so, anyway, but the frequency stability is still not quite there yet. It's still settling down, obviously. Um, and it is just jumping around a little bit and stepping there. I wonder if I... Um, let me nudging that switch which is making it there, or is it just moving that knob? I'll do that and nudging, oh, I'm nudging that switch there. This button here is a bit dodgy. I might have to look at that, I've got to figure out how to get to it. So 
It was a really fast gate time. That's still not too bad. That's still fairly accurate with the fast gate time. Is it on hold or is it actually still counting just really slowly? Maybe it's just really slow. So yeah, this has drifted up a bit more. And the Phillips are showing a 0.3 hertz drift. So... Um, yeah, I think the best way to do this is to leave it a bit longer, let it um, more settle down and warm up properly. And uh, go from there. But this button here is concerning, because that, that button there says really dodgy. You know, that's um, not right. So the button's all pretty good. All right, these are all fairly solid. That on there is just flopping around. So it looks like it's got something wrong with that button, but I've got to figure out how to get to it. I did take these not these nuts off here and this knob off, thinking that it would release the front panel, but it still wouldn't come away. The edges were, were loose, but something in the center is holding it. Um, and there are some a couple of there's a screw behind the bit, the back of that board there. But I might have to actually detach the front panel, tip it there forward so I can get to the screw. But, uh, yeah, because that button's obviously a bit faulty there. It's a bit of a shame, because all the others seem to be okay. You can't, you can just touch them and it's fine. You know, it's just that one. Yeah, just that one. That's dodgy. So, uh, hoping I can fix that. It might not be much of a big deal. Might be able to put a bit of foam or something behind it to help hold it out. Something like that. I don't know, we'll see. But uh, that food is still drifting, as you can see here. So, uh, I'll take it up a bit more. I'll still adjust it a long way from where it was. I've done it about probably two turns or something like that on the adjustment pot here. So, in total, uh, two clockwise turns. And now I'm actually going anti clockwise to. Bring it back slowly. But, um, yeah, anyway, that's that. So I was going to give it some more time, as I said, as, I, as I've kept saying, and uh, we'll go from there. This isn't quite correlating with that one. Oh no, okay, it's just the gate time. I've got the gate time so long, and the other one has taken too long to count. Okay. Um, so you can see it's out slightly here, and so is that one there. Anyway, it's pretty damn close, you know. It's certainly close enough to be happy with. But uh, so it looks like I've now got a uh, a multi gigahertz counter, whereas before that Philips, um, well, that one there I'm using a Philips, that's rated to 1.5 gigahertz, so. Just there, 1.5. This HP is only to 225 megahertz. Um, that's got better resolution, but I say it's very, very touchy. Um, once it's stabilised, it's okay, but it is slightly out of calibration, not much, but very slightly. Again, that's another good reason to use an external reference source, um, which I'm not doing. My intention was actually to get that um, that rubidium unit I've got just there. Just sort of get the hand out of the way. But as I'm going to get, I'm afraid. So that, that rubidium unit you know, was sitting just there. Yeah. The intention was to put it in a case and um, have a pop of sock on the front and have a 10 megahertz output. I was also going to build in a um, a uh, splitter as well, so that's got multiple outputs. Um, rather than just one output, I was going to have you know half a dozen or so, so I could run it to the very bits of test gear which need to have that reference oscillator. So we're running for something reference. Um, it's one of the things I haven't got around to it yet. 
I will do one day. It's some of my projects to do one day. And when I do do it, then I will definitely be doing a video of it, obviously. Um, yeah. So, right. She's still drifting. So, that'll do for now. I think that's what, 21, well, 22 minutes of video now, just on this section. I think that's enough for the time being. Right, so it's been about an hour now, um, and it's stabilised a lot more. It's only drifting probably about 10 hertz up and down at most. Um, so it's still drifting around slightly, but it's got a lot better. And so it's probably a combination of different things. You know, like my, um, my signal generator is still settling down. It's been on for about two hours now, I suppose. So, um, but it's, it's more stable than it was. I think that's probably about it. And I think I'm just going to leave it just there. So it's showing us, you know, six hertz out. Um, or thereabouts. It is drifting up and down probably at 10 hertz from that point. So I think I'm going to leave it there and say that's good enough. Um, interestingly, the fluke, oh sorry, the fluke, the Phillips counter is showing that. So it's um, it's off slightly. There was mention about a um, an offset adjustment of the actual oscillator. It's supposed to be a marking on the board somewhere which says what the offset should be, um, like plus three hertz or something like that, wherever it'll be, um, to allow for temperature stability. Um, so I might just have a little look at that and just see how that compares. But basically, it looks like it's done, really. Um, I think that's good enough, considering I don't normally measure frequencies that high anyway. Um, I may need to. How accurate it needs to be at that level, I don't know. Probably within 10 hertz is going to be good enough. Um, probably within 100 hertz is going to be good enough. I'm probably just being a bit over fussy with it, really. Um, I'm not actually sure what the spec is for this, to be honest, about whether it should be, um, you know, what it's... Um, it's spec is for the actual resolution it should be getting at 1 gigahertz or whatever it should be you know um, what its level of accuracy and frequency stability will be I don't know I haven't read that it, I mean it's been a manual but I haven't read it yet so uh, yeah anyway so it could be I mean, what it's doing now is we're all within spec anyway um, if it bothers me enough with being off then I might look at uh, replacing that TCXO with a oven oscillator. Um, but like I said, when I tried to inject the external frequency on the um, jack on the back, um, it just didn't like it. It just didn't want to know. So um, I don't know why that was. I'm going to have to look into that and find out what's going on there. But uh, yeah, it really just didn't want to, didn't want to do it. So um, yeah, there may be a problem with injecting an external frequency. Um, it's gone up to about 20 hertz now, but I say I'm not too worried about that. It's just close enough now, I think. So that'll do for now.